Hey, what's up guys? Pops from Pops Hobby Jun Dungeon coming to you today. Um, Want to do show you from start to finish my process for cutting foam. Specifically today I'm cutting a, a gun case for a customer. Um, he asked that I don't show his gun and that's fine. But I can show you the case cutting and my process. So let's get right into it. Uh, here you can see me um, putting down uh, blue painters tape it's scotch found at home depot or any big big box stores and so i put that on the wood on the uh, bed first uh sticky side down and that's uh because we're gonna glue the wood here in a little bit or glue glue the the foam down to the bed um so now um i'm installing the uh, painters tape on the back side of the foam this is um uh two pound uh blue uh dense closed cell dense foam very dense it's almost like rubber you might find this type of foam used for like kneeling pads in the garden or or other things as well uh packaging and stuff but um it's really it cuts really clean. It's really good foam for um, for doing uh, gun cases or tool. Uh, it comes in all all different sizes. Uh, Toolboxes uh, for cutting out uh, spots for your tools. I mean, there's a million and one uses that you can use this stuff, and it's uh, great stuff. And on the top, I put an eighth inch. I glued down an eighth inch uh, layer of black closed cell foam that um, give it that contrast, you know, so the top would be uh, black and then the center in the middle, the rest would be blue. This is uh, called Cross Link Linked Polyester, two pound, Cross Linked Polyester. I'm in Michigan and there's a uh, foam place here in Michigan called Foam Factory. They ship all over the country. The only problem with uh, the colored foams is you gotta buy a giant sheet. I had to buy a 72 inch by 48, and uh, really it comes like 50, 72 by 50 something, 52 or 51. They call it 48, but it's really uh, approximately 52 wide by 72 tall. And I used to use a regular utility knife to cut the pieces out of it that I need. Um, and I usually cut them a little bigger, <clears throat> excuse me, to, uh, so I can use my CNC, uh, with a little left over there, but a little space, uh, to work with. Uh, there you can see that black, uh, closed foam. That's, that black is not a cross-link poly, polyethylene, polyethylene, it's just a regular closed cell polyethylene. Um, so now I'm grabbing my, uh my uh, super glue and we're gonna put that down first uh, uh, and um, so I like to put the super glue on the bed and not on the foam part because when you go to flip the foam over the glue might s splatter everywhere so I put the glue on the uh, on the scotch tape on the bed and again I I, that's, I don't do it on the foam because when you go to flip the foam over, it's going to run and it's going to get all over. So it's better to put the glue on the bed. And um, this is a, a, a CA uh, thin set. This is very thin glue. I think I'm going to show you a picture here. Yeah, it's BSI, uh, eight ounce bottle. It's a big bottle. I go through a lot of it. You can find that on Amazon. I'll put links below in the description. And now that's the activator, Insta set another eight ounce bottle and then I bought a small applicator bottle that I'm going to spray um, on the on the tape of the foam that I the back side of the foam and this is an activator so when I press the two together it's going to set super fast I mean you literally have one second it's not gonna you're not gonna have any time to play with it to move it around um, so you got to be really good with your lines how you're going to lay it down and that tape helps me l line everything up on the bed there so i know right where it's going to go and then you just have to push it 
give a little pressure. I'm going to stand up and give a little pressure on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's going to, you know, make it instantly secured to the bed. So I don't have to use clamps. I don't have to use any other thing. I know that's not going to go anywhere. So the two tapes, the tape on the bottom of the foam and the tape on the bed are secured to the bed and the foam. And then in between the two is the glue and the activator. So, uh, so that's how I, that's how I do it. That's how I secure foam or sometimes I even secure wood that way. Um, I find it a lot easier and faster to secure things to my bed using this method, the scotch blue scotch painters tape and super glue and activator. It's just, um, sometimes it's easier and faster, uh, bigger projects. Yeah. If I can clamp them down, I'll clamp them down, you know, uh, but for small projects or, 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 uh, uh rubbery projects, I guess is, uh, that's what I do. <clears throat> so here I'm just, I have a bits, uh, a bit from bits and bits. It's their, uh, O flute, uh, foam cutting bit it has uh, I believe two two flutes it's a two flute bit and it does a really nice job with what you'll see at the end here it's a it does a really fantastic job this is a uh, large enough to go through a two inch piece of foam uh, with about a quarter inch left over so it's just enough and most uh, gun cases uh, use two inch foam for the cutout anyway so it's perfect so i'm just dialing in my uh my bit there and uh here we go we're gonna um jump right into this so i sped this uh video up otherwise uh we'd be sitting here for 20 minutes talking about nothing this took about um 21 minutes i think it said on the screen and when i looked at my uh, clock it was pretty close it was either 22 or 23 minutes the the program the, sh the uh, carbide 3d uh, program that i'm using um, said 23 minutes or 24 minutes or said 21 minutes in it and it finished in about 23 or 24 minutes so not too bad uh for a couple hundred dollars worth of work uh, which by the way that's what i charge for something like this is uh two hundred dollars um I have to have the gun. If I don't have the drawing of the gun in my archive, I have to have the gun so that I can take pictures of it and uh, trace it on my computer screen using a vector program, which maybe someday I'll do a, a video on how to trace objects. It's, it's not that hard to do. Uh, there's tons of YouTube videos already out, out there about how to use vector uh, programs and, and trace an image and get exact sizes and stuff. It's, it's really not, it sounds harder than it is. Anyways, so right now I'm cutting out pockets. Uh, you saw earlier it was cutting out the gun all the way through because the gun's kind of thick and, it, and it's going to fit right in that pocket at the top there. But right now um, I'm doing pockets for all the magazines. He's got uh, four, on the left there he's got four uh, 20 round magazines and on the right, I think he uh, gave me three 25 round uh, Uzi magazines. If you couldn't tell this is an Uzi and uh, it's, it's got a silencer and uh, and seven mags, three 25 round mags on the right and uh, four 20, 20 round mags on the left. Right now I'm cutting out the, uh, the silencer. That's where the silencer is going to go in that pocket there. <clears throat> and then he also gave me a uh, metal or plastic, I'm sorry, mag loader. And that's what I'm cutting out there is the, the pocket for the mag loader. So he's going to be able to carry all of his, uh, magazines and, and, uh, silencer gun and mag loader in one case. It's a Pelican case, uh, 37 by 14. Uh, here I'm just cutting out the final outer dimension of the uh, case of the inside of the case I should say so that it uh, fits in perfect I usually um, give maybe another quarter inch because I want it to fit in nice and tight 
and the foam has you know a give to it so it's not a problem squeezing it down into the case so I typically go a quarter inch taller and a quarter inch longer and then uh, yeah so um, that was it uh, like I said it took about 24 minutes to completely cut that out obviously I sped it up uh, 800 times <laughs> So we didn't have to sit here and find things for me to talk about for 24 minutes. Uh, so you can see how the edge around just peeled right off. And now I'm going to take the inside uh, of the Uzi, the gun that's coming out. Super simple. And you're maybe wondering how come it's coming out so easily. And it's not, I, may, I, may, I make it look easy, but it's not. I'm, I'm really having to tug on it because don't forget it's taped and super glued down and then it, it is messy i mean i could have hooked the hose to the cnc while it was while it was doing its thing but um it's not like sawdust where it, it flies around everywhere it's big chunks that are coming out and so i usually disconnect the vacuum and just vacuum everything up uh when i'm done and um so that's what i'm doing right now it's just trying to clean things up a little bit before I finish taking everything, uh, taking the rest of it off the table. So I just give little tugs and yanks because I don't want to tear the foam and um, there it is. It just comes right off and uh, try to clean up a little bit more while I'm holding that and then uh and then basically you just peel the tape off the back side um sometimes the tape gets left on on the table and it comes off clean and sometimes it comes off with the uh, foam and uh, gets ripped off the table so either way you got to take the tape off whether it's off the table or the back of the foam and um yeah i mean that's really it it's not it's not rocket science it's not that hard you, you know uh, of course trial and error um, I think the hardest part is probably uh, measuring and, and drawing on a computer, especially if you're not computer literate with vectored images and stuff. That's probably the hardest part. But uh, again, there's tons and tons of videos online uh, about creating vectors and tracing. And, and I think uh, a couple hours of your time uh, with a program, I use uh, Adobe Illustrator. Uh, I pay a monthly fee. Uh, because I use it all the time for not only CNC, but I do laser work, I do laser engraving, I do uh, printing. I have a large format printer that prints uh, UV ink so I can print to anything. So I, I'm very familiar with these programs and how they function. But uh, I can't imagine uh, anybody not being able to pick it up within uh, a day or a couple days of, of working, you know, eight hours on it. You you get pretty proficient. Um, with it and uh, so I'm just cleaning up a little more uh, I can use a vacuum uh, it's just big chunks of foam <laughs> except I picked up some of the parts to the CNC that wasn't good um, yeah so it's not that hard to do and um, uh, we're going to finish up by showing you how it fits perfectly. Again, the customer didn't want me to show off his gun, so I'm not going to put the gun in the case if that's what you're waiting for. I'm sorry. The customer asked specifically um, if he might, or I asked him specifically if he minded if I showed off his gun, and he said uh, no, he would prefer not. So I, uh, I can't uh, go against the customer's uh, request. And then, um, so the last thing to do is uh, sometimes when you're doing CNC work, if you um, uh, foam especially doesn't uh, typically, um, you know, cut perfectly. So you see all these little uh, nubbies sticking out. Uh, I don't know what else to call them other than uh, little nubbies uh, where the cutter either, either wasn't deep enough or... Um, didn't uh didn't pick up all the foam at the bottom and that's okay you just go around with your fingers and and uh, pick it off it's not uh, too tedious uh, if you set your depth correctly uh, some people like to leave a skin film 
which would be a thin membrane uh, across the whole bottom. I particularly don't. I like to uh, make the job as easy as possible. And so you see me just picking up, uh, picking off little pieces of jaggedy edge foam. Uh, you can use a wire brush uh, if you have a lot of it, like a brass brush and just scrape the brass brush against the uh, corners and edges and that'll rip it off. But uh, I just use my, my fingers and uh, peel it off. See, there's some, you just want to clean it up. So, you know, it, you want it to look professional. And, and um, if uh, I could go around the corners or the edge with the Dremel tool, uh, there's a million ways you could remove this. I'm sure you're going to leave comments in the, in the, uh, down below. Um, you don't necessarily have to get it all that involved. Uh, the customer is going to think it's beautiful and kick ass anyway. So, um, but whatever. So, uh, anyway, so I just wanted to show you, uh, the case and, uh, how it fits in the case. And like I said earlier, I made it a quarter inch bigger all the way around. So it's, it's a hair. Like a, you got to not force it in there, but kind of push it down and you want it that tight. And then um, I'll glue it down after this with some spray glue and it'll be done. The customer will be happy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long and I hope you stuck around. Please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, my name's Pops from Pops Hobby Dungeon. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.